Hello. So, you want to learn how to play the cello. Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that you can't learn how to play the cello from a video. Anybody who tells you that they have a video that's going to teach you how to play the cello is pulling your chain. Uh, it's not going to happen. If you think about it, whatever you can do that you think you do the best, that it's taken you your life to learn how to do, imagine somebody thinking they could learn that from a video. I don't think it's going to happen. So you're probably thinking, why would I want to watch this video? That's what I'm hearing right at the beginning. Well, I figure you got your hands on a cello and you're thinking you want to learn how to play it and you've heard people say things like I just did and it didn't deter you and you're going to do it no matter what. So I just want to give you some ideas so that you won't go that far astray. Because one of the things you'll discover as you're trying to learn how to play the cello is that what you practice, what you repeat and do, becomes part of you. That's why all of us practice so much. But we make every effort to practice correct things. Because as one of my students said to me recently, practice makes permanent. And if you practice holding your cello wrong or holding your bow wrong, you're going to end up making it harder in the end to learn how to play the cello. So while you're figuring out that you can't learn how to play the cello from a video, I want to be sure you don't dig yourself too big a hole. What I do suggest you do is at some point find somebody that you feel simpatico with that, that gets who you are and what you want to do and cares about helping you do that and take some lessons and you'll do just great. So in the meantime how do you hold the cello? Why don't you grab your cello, have a seat, and sit like I'm seated. Seated. Okay, you ready? Now, let me tell you what you're doing wrong. You see, when you think about how I'm holding the cello, you're thinking that I'm holding the cello pretty much straight towards me, but I'm not. Right now, I have both my hands on my knees. And this hand, I have to come up six or seven inches to get to the corner of the cello. This hand, I have to bring it back in towards me four or five inches to get to the corner of the cello. The cello is not straight. It's tilted. It's flat against this leg and it's sticking out on this side. And that's on purpose. Because you have a neck and a head. Cello has a neck and what we call a scroll. And one of the laws of the universe is that two objects can't occupy the same space. And your cello is never going to complain about backache. It's never going to get tired after a few hours of practice. But if you sit ergonomically and well, you'll be fine also. And then the two of you can get together to make good music. Uh, so that's why we don't play straight down the middle. We have it off to the side. And why is it tilted? Well, you'll discover as you start to work on the cello that we play much more often on the higher strings than the lower strings. Uh, there are only a handful of notes that we really need to play on the lowest string. 
Um, they're wonderful notes, don't get me wrong, but we spend a lot of time on the upper strings, and because our cello is tilted, we can get to the A string without raising our arm way up if the cello is tilted like this. So that's how we hold it. Uh, there are three basic rules for positioning your cello well. First, we talked about it should be flat against this leg. Okay, not out at all. Flat against that leg. It's your right leg. Okay. Second rule is, this varies a little bit on how you're constructed. Not everybody's built the same, not everybody holds the cello the same. But for me, I like my leg to be in the lower bound. This is called the lower bound. You can forget that, but I can't think of any better word. So the little corner is kind of above the knee on this side. And remember, that's the back is resting against the leg. The front is way out in front. And the third thing is that the lowest peg is right behind the ear. And what you want in your seat is a seat. This is a very nice seat. I don't know if you can see it. Something like this. You don't need a back. Could be just a chair with no arms, but you like it so that your hip is just a little bit higher than your knee. Okay? If if your when your feet are flat and your legs are going straight up, then your hip should be just a little bit higher than your knee. So you're just a little bit of a, of a forward lean. Um, and then uh, the th you adjust your end pin so that you get the peg behind your ear here. And now you're all set. So that's for holding the cello. You want both of your arms to be able to move comfortably up and down the fingerboard. You want to be able to get to all the strings comfortably. And that's going to do it for you. Now, in terms of holding the bow, there's a balance point on the bow. And what I recommend is that you start holding your bow around the balance point so that you can get your hand comfortable with a good bow hold which is something that should look like this. Thumb on the back is just barely touching. I always tell my students, if you drop the bow, it's a great sign. You should hold it as loose as you possibly can. Okay? So, your thumb is arched. There's a little bit of a bump there. Just the tip of it is touching the stick. The stick of the bow is in the first joint of the first finger and on the pad of the pinky. So when you first learn, hold your hand out, palm up, lay the bow in the first joint of the first finger and on the pad of the pinky. That's the top segment, about in the middle of that top segment. And then tuck your thumb. Just touch very lightly. That's all you need. Okay? And if you're holding it at the balance point, it's easy to get used to that. Once you're used to it, you can move yourself down to where we eventually hold the bow. But if you start down here with all the weight of the bow against your hand, you're almost certain to get a very distorted bow hold, um, which you don't want. It's like if you were holding a pole you know, think of a pole 20 feet long. If you're at one end of it, it takes a lot of energy to hold that pole up. But if you're in the middle, the balance point, you just hold it. It's not fighting you. So 
the balance point of the bow, you can figure it out yourself. Just slide the bow around until it balances. Okay, what I have all my students do is throw the bow up in the air and catch it on their nose like this. Just kidding. Um, so uh, there's your balance point. Start holding it right around there. Do it by putting that your thumb is going to be opposite your second finger. So think of that as an inch or so below the balance point as your target spot. And when you lay the bow in the hand, put it on the first joint of the first finger and on the pad of the pinky with the target point right above your second finger. And then you just tuck the thumb on. And for our purposes, this is the first finger, this is the second finger third finger, this is the fourth finger. And when you're reading cello music, that applies to this hand as well, in terms of the numbers. Okay? So, what you want to do, get that nice, loose, relaxed bow hold, get comfortable manipulating the bow in the air, play games with yourself, do windshield wipers, make some soup, rockets, Whatever you want to do, just get used to that, holding it very, very loose. Then you put it on the cello. And I'll show you how to do that in lesson two, right after I sell you a bridge. <laughs>